Yeah, people always ask me why it is, like, why am I still hungry? Why do I still keep chasing this dream on a pair of skis? Why do I keep pushing the limits? Why do I keep trying to find the limit of what I can do physically? Wise is the most complicated person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> he is everything and all things to all people and it fascinates me. He's a husband <laughs> and my best friend. Um, he's a best friend to so many people that he doesn't have enough time for everybody. He's a brother, he's a son. Um, he's an excellent father. He's an author. Um, <laughs> he's a bowliner. He's an archer. He's a fisher. He's a lover of life. Um, he's amazing. I don't really approach skiing from, or life necessarily, from how many more medals can I win? How many more titles can I put behind my name? I'm just out there to see what I can do. Uh, I'm passionate about finding the limits, uh, my own personal limits, finding what what's next. So that day, uh, I was just trying new things, trying new tricks, trying new uh, styles of rotation, and kind of goofing around, but I was just enjoying myself. I think because I do so much skiing, I almost forget the risks that are involved. Um, it becomes commonplace, it becomes day to day, it becomes uh, something that I just do and don't even think about. And what I didn't realize before that moment happened was that I was taking an unnecessary risk. In hindsight, I look back and I'm like, man, that was not that smart. I really could have done that a lot better. I could have been a lot smarter about that. But in the moment, I was just enjoying myself and trying something new. <laughs> Unfortunately, on that day of my life, like, like in many other people's circumstances, that one moment decision uh, changed the trajectory of my life forever. <laughs> My femur! My femur! It's a femur! <sighs> when I look back on the video, the I'm like, man, I hit that it's going way too fast for what I was trying to do. But I was just kind of in a mental place where I was just, I for one thing, I had been used to hitting it extremely fast because I had already set the highest air on it. So um, I think I was a little bit almost, had a little bit of velocitation where I was going what I look back on now and think is really fast and in my head while I was doing it, I wasn't really going that fast. I was going to go kind of slow. And um, man, it just, it gets away from you quickly. That was so dumb. That was, you don't, you never get hurt doing something smart. I was going to go small, catch the tranny, just got booted, came down weird and just... Collapse. The vibes were up. Yeah. It was competition day, last day of the week. We were going home the next day, so it was really nothing, felt like nothing could really go wrong. It was all over. David did the record and it was awesome. We popped off our skis and we were about to walk up the hill to watch David in Malachi. I've never really seen him have so much urgency in his voice. He was like, Mommy! Mommy, I have to tell daddy something. And you know, the sleds are right there and all the people and they're about to take off. And I was like, you know, oh my goodness, what do I do? This little boy is so passionate about this. How do I tell him no? And I just saw a window of opportunity and I said, okay. And I flagged David down and we stalled the cat for just a moment for Malachi to go talk to David and he ran up to David and he was like, Daddy, I just want to let you know that I love you. And it was powerful to me in that moment. 
but the next three minutes explained it all because he said I love you and David was like I love you too buddy and he went up on the cat and Malachi and I finished hiking the hill to watch David where he was at and by the time I got up there all I saw was a crowd at the bottom of the hill but I just knew like I had peace about it because Malachi knew what he had to say. Unfortunately, even Nayeli was the only one that saw it all go down. She was the first one to get there, and so I think she's been traumatized the most from it. Because um, by the time Malachi and I got down to her, she had completely lost it. <laughs> I think David took my first priority and I wanted to be there for him, but I know that my second priority is a mom and I didn't even know how to console her. There really wasn't anything that anybody could do for her because she just loves her dad so much. I think the reason she freaked out was because she's afraid of losing him forever. She's afraid that it's not going to be a goodbye. It's... Yeah, she's afraid to lose him. We go to a hospital. Who are we going to see? Daddy! The most interesting thing I discovered through the whole experience was that um, when you're in a foreign country and you take a helicopter to the hospital, the biggest challenge is actually loneliness. And if you need to go into uh, absolute emergency surgery, you're right there, you're ready to go. The downside is, once you get there, you're definitely the first person of your friends to be there. So I'm sitting here in this uh, hospital, kind of alone. It's a, it's a unique experience for sure. You need to get this bone taken care of in the next 24 hours. But there's a couple different ways we could do it, and you have to sign here, sign here, sign here. And I'm completely alone, and I'm not totally sure if this is the right call. I'm grateful to be here, and I'm grateful that I got such good people working on such good people on my team. I got my, uh, my personal surgeon, Dr. Cooper, back in the U.S., um, using all his connections and all his bandwidth to make sure that I'm gonna get the right thing done. Hello, squad. Hi. Oh, I was missing you. Careful of my leg, I'm gonna move the jump and over, up and over here to the side. Hi, buddy. Aw, oh, I was missing you guys. You sad? Mm -hmm. Me too. Just a little. But, Daddy's gonna be all right, right? Mm -hmm. Do you wanna see my cool scar? Do you want to see the big gnarly cut? Is it scary? You'll think it's scary because it's big. So it starts at my hip and goes all the way down to just above my knee. You know what it means is that all the hard part is over and now it's just time for the recovery. The reality is that hard times or broken femurs are inevitable. There, It's not a question of if you're going to go through adversity, it's a question of when. and. What I've learned through this particularly adverse time in my life is that difficulties aren't by nature bad. Um, sometimes a difficult time in your life is exactly what you need uh, to progress and grow. And I can honestly look back just 10 weeks later and say that I'm thankful for this injury. I'm not gonna say I w wouldn't undo it if I could, but I've learned so many lessons and I've learned so much grit and determination and I have really been forced to lean on the people around me. If things continue to go well, as they have been going, uh, with no major setbacks or uh, difficulties, this injury should actually not even affect my ski season. Now that being said, it's going to be a long, difficult road to get there. <laughs>